Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. And uh, there is a group of Zambians who feel that uh, uh, some of the discussions might not be uh, a Zambian way of thinking. And democracy also entails a freedom of expression. And you stop a certain group to express themselves. Uh, I mean, the, uh, uh, freedom of expression is one of the principal tenets of democracy. And you stop them. Is, 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 isn't it against uh, no, Alex. us being called democratic? No, Alex. Mm -hmm. don't, don't mislead. Uh, I mean, it's a question. Yes, I know. Don't, sure. don't allow people to mislead the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing wrong with people expressing themselves. Mm -hmm. That freedom to express oneself mm -hmm. is enshrined in our constitution. It's allowable. Now, why do you want to protest? Mm -hmm. So, it would have been better if, for example, they said, this is the agenda of the conference. And item number Shan Shan is saying that this, this, and this we don't want, therefore we are protesting. They are calling for protests out of nothing. Basically, they wanted to protest uh, what they didn't see, what they didn't know, what they had no idea. Mm. What they wanted to call a protest over was non-existent. There was nothing like uh, uh, gay rights being discussed at the summit. Mm -hmm. There was nothing like gay rights being discussed with the U.S. Vice President. There was nothing. So what was the protest all about when it was premised on those, uh, uh, on, on, on the fact that there is going to be talk around this and we don't want this to be talked about and we don't want this to be brought into Zambia. Mm -hmm. What is it that you are protesting against? So, so what, because, what, no, mm -hmm. let me finish. Mm -hmm. Because even when you talk about gayism and lesbianism and so on, this government has been extremely clear mm -hmm. from the president, the vice president, the ministers. Uh, we have pronounced ourselves over and over again that the matters to deal with gayism, lesbianism are properly enshrined in our constitution that we do not allow those in the country. President Akainde Hichirema is on the record, both in opposition and in government, that this will not be promoted by this government. Just a few weeks ago he was on the Copper Belt and speaking to the clergy in Chingola, he reiterated that co-ant position. So why you want to keep uh, bringing that position and giving it legitimacy and wanting to protest over it, uh, that is not a protest. That is anarchy. That is misbehaving. And misbehaving mm -hmm. will not be tolerated. Uh, 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 going back to the previous times of the country where whenever there's a group of people that want to protest and you attach certain conditionalities? There's, there's no cut blanche. When you want to protest, you protest over a matter that you are aware of, mm -hmm. you have got the facts about it, and therefore you are expressing yourselves over it. So they are expressing themselves over that matter. T tell me about Where it. do they find it? Where, where have they mm -hmm. seen it on the agenda? Where have they seen it on the talking points of uh, the visiting vice president? Nowhere. So you cannot be bringing up an issue, imaginary as it were in your heads, mm -hmm. and then you want to protest over it. You want to call for a protest over an issue that you're imagining in your heads, we can't allow that. A protest can even break into a riot mm -hmm. uh, if you're not careful. So why risk it when it is a non-issue, it doesn't exist, but you want to protest over an issue that is in your minds. One protest in your minds, protest in your homes. So, you so what you're saying is that uh, the freedom of expression uh, under the new Don administration will continue being curtailed. Is, is that what you're saying? No. There is no freedom of expression that is being curtailed. I think the freedom of expression has been enhanced under this administration mm -hmm. unlike any other administration before this. But still, there is a group of people that want to protest and they're not being allowed. Like I, I'll be telling you the same answer. Mm -hmm. There was no need to protest about a non-issue. There was no issue to do with what they wanted to protest. So, what are you going to protest over? Tell, tell me, you're saying that the issue of uh, 
uh, uh, issues to do with the LGBTQ community uh, uh, was not part of the agenda of the democratic uh, summit that we had uh, Zambia co-hosted with other countries tell me about the communique that was issued later uh, there's a growing feeling that yes it was part of the discussion but Zambia made its position known. Precisely. Uh, it, 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 look, this is enshrined in documents that are practiced uh, in other countries and jurisdictions the world over, mm -hmm. and in our own country and jurisdiction and sovereignty, we do not mm -hmm. uh, recognize So there's a community that not, touched on it. We do not practice that. Mm -hmm. Bottom line remains mm -hmm. that issues, look, for example, mm -hmm. the UN recognizes the rights of gays and lesbians. We attend the UN. We are part of the UN. But we do not uh, uh, domesticate that. We do not advocate for that. We do not agree with that. And our constitution is very clear. Mm -hmm. And so everybody has to respect the sovereignty of our country. Because in our country, what may be tolerated out there is not tolerated in our country. So why would you want to keep talking about a thing that is clearly not tolerated? It is not a personal position of the president. Mm -hmm. It is a position of the people of Zambia that said through the document called the Constitution that is governing all of us. And that is why it says we, the people of Zambia. So we, the people of Zambia, have said unto ourselves, we will not recognize this. And the leader that we have elected holds the Bible and swears to uphold and protect the very document called the Constitution so that the views and the feelings and aspirations of our people are protected and guarded. So there is no issue there. Right. So stop raising the mm -hmm. issue uh, about this gayism that doesn't exist. All right. Mr. Kona, make me understand. So the communique that was issued at the end of the conference, at the end of the summit, touched on that. And you are saying it that... touched uh, on many issues. Yeah, but also touched on what we are discussing now. Yes. Isn't it? And uh, before the question that... Before I ask the issue on, on the communique, you are saying that there was no need to protest because it wasn't part of the agenda. Yes, it wasn't part of the agenda. But it was discussed. But, but it, 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 it was, was part of the discussion. It was not part of the agenda. Remember that Zambia co-hosted mm -hmm. with other nations. Okay? And within the nations that were part of the Democratic Summit, some of them, the U.S., for example, recognizes that. So a communique now is a collection of what has been agreed. Okay? What has been agreed in the summit. This is what we agreed as uh, uh, you know, a summit. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that we agreed to look at. Now, after having agreed, those things now are domesticated. And in our domesticating those issues, there are issues within that communique that we don't tolerate, that go out of us with the laws of our land. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we will not implement them, we will not discuss them, we will have nothing to do with them. Right. And the other protest that we were supposed to witness is a protest on the visit of the U.S. Uh, Vice President. Yes. There, there were some talks that uh, she shouldn't, lack of better terms, shouldn't come to Zambia. Okay. I mean, it's, it's part of uh, expression. Yeah, well, and they can express so, themselves, so, but uh, remember. So, uh, make me understand, was government communicated to on the reasons why the, the, the U.S. Vice President was not supposed to uh, come to Zambia? Well, look, you, we, we can't sit and get communicated to by an opposition political party that that person should not come to Zambia. They, they, but, they, they, but, are, they are stakeholders. They are, they are part of Yes, of no, the they, they are part. Mm -hmm. But they ought to give, for example, they ought to give reasons. That this person you are bringing here maybe is a terrorist or something, or this person coming to visit us is this. For them, their issue was that this person is coming to talk about lesbianism and gayism and so on. Mm -hmm. Did you hear her mention a word in that fashion? Never. So we knew better. That's why we are government. We knew better what the vice president was coming to do to Zambia. We knew better why she was coming to, to, to visit the country. They don't know. They were taking wild guesses. They were using their imagination. And they were basically being 
that for lacking a better term, mischievous, that uh, they, they wanted to raise issues which were non-issues. You call it mischievous, others call it checks and balances. So what are you checking and balancing when it doesn't exist? You check and balance what is factual. It's there on the paper. It says this is going to happen. And you provide the checks and balances. And you, by providing those checks and balances, your opening statement is this is what you are going to do. As far as we are concerned, this is not correct. Mm -hmm. So where were they basing that one? Especially now that uh, she has come and she has gone. And no such thing happened. No such thing was mentioned. Totally nothing. Mm -hmm. So now it proves the point that uh, they were being mischievous because there was no nothing that indicated that that was going to be discussed or even forced upon the country. Is it mischievous too strong of a word? Ramba. Is that better? So, so you're replacing it with? Amamba. Mr. Kawana, in the visit of uh, the, the Vice President, we, we had another statement. Uh, 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 we had a statement from the Patriotic Front where they felt that uh, the point of recognition of the patriotic front in government to achieve Zambia's democracy tenet has not been fully recognized. Okay, uh, part of the statement, maybe I'll read it in part. The US uh, second in command should be aware that President Lungo's record of uniting Zambia uh, through infrastructure saw him construct roads, airports, flyover bridges, which changed the face of the country. And uh, further on, the statement uh, reads that uh, it was a standard practice that visiting heads of state or their vice presidents meet incumbent president, visit former presidents, visit the speaker, and lay rest on former presidents. Graves. Miss Harris did everything except visiting President Lungo, which was a diplomatic blunder. How, how is it um, a diplomatic blunder? The, the, the reasons have been given. <coughs> Excuse me. It is uh, nowhere near being a diplomatic blunder mm -hmm. or blunder at all. Mm -hmm. Because uh, President Lungu is the president of the Patriotic Front. So and, even and if he's a six no, 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 no. He is the president of the Patriotic Front. Mm -hmm. He is active in politics. And that is by word of uh, proclamation. They themselves as Patriotic Front have stated that President Lungu is still the president of the Patriotic Front. So even when you have a visiting a dignitary coming to visit the country and they go to visit uh, President Lungu, they are going to visit the PF president. They might as well visit Sean Tembo, he's a, he's a party president. They might as well visit Tayari, he's a vice president. They might as well visit with President Musoni, he's the president of a political party. If you want to claim the status of statesman, or as father of the nation as they claim, but remember that there is only one father of the nation, and the father of this nation is Dr. Kaunda. And President Lungu ought to be the elder statesman of this country, meaning that he ought to belong to all the Zambians and not a sect in Zambia. But he has reduced himself, and the people around him have reduced him to being a political party president of the opposition patriotic front. This is attested even in documents before court. You are aware as journalists that uh, the documents that uh, Nixon, Nixon Chirangwa, Secretary General, Honorable Chirangwa, filed in that Mao Sampa case of theirs, uh, states clearly that as far as PF is concerned, President Lungu is still the president of the PF. They have no letter from him resigning as president, a position that was buttressed by their own party spokesperson, Rajinda, a position that was further buttressed even on this platform by their only member, uh, Boman Musambo. So you can't on one hand claim that this man is a leader of this political party and not any other political party, but just this group of people. And then on the other hand, you want to claim that no, but he's an elder statesman, he's the father of the nation, he ought to be visited. No, if you want to be an elder statesman, or even call yourself father of the nation if you so wish, mm -hmm. it's a position that you earn. Mm -hmm. It is not given uh, automatically. President Rupia Bandame, he saw rest 
in peace when he resigned from active politics. He wrote a letter to the secretary to cabinet and it was copied to the MMD and that is why the MMD immediately went into gear to elect a new president for the MMD, the one that saw never small by image as leader, the one that had uh, other you know, contestants, and so on, contesting for the presidency. Because it was very clear that President Rupia Banda said, I am no longer leader of the MMD, I am former president. Mm -hmm. Has President Lungu done that? In one moment we are told he has done that, he has uh, resigned from active politics. The next moment his own political party is claiming he hasn't, he's still our president. Has he disputed that? Has he commented over that? No sir. Right. Even the late president Rupia Banda, mm -hmm. uh, I remember when he was in South Africa on SABC, he was asked for example that uh, there's a new political party in power now. Uh, the PF and they claim that uh, they are going to put more money in the pockets of the Zambian people. Do you think they will achieve this? And I still remember vividly President Banda's response. He said, when we are campaigning, we make a lot of promises as politicians. As to whether those will be fulfilled or not, we have to give the new party in office benefit of a doubt. And we must give them chance. That question is a preserve of the people of Zambia who will ask them mm. at the expiry of the mandate that they have been given if they were able to fulfill that promise. All right. Okay. Mr. Governor, let, let me ask you this. You, you've explained uh, your uh, perception on the status of the former president and his active participation in politics now. But let's get back to a few months ago. Last year, is it 2021? Uh, Secretary to the cabinet is said to have received a resignation letter uh, of President Lungu from the PF. And there was a response as well when there were steps to seek questions on the status of President Lungu then, as his role in the patriotic front, the secretary to the cabinet acting, uh, in his acting capacity now confirmed, uh, Mr. Kangwa said that yes, there was a receipt of President Lungu who has uh, resigned from active politics and now he's just a former 60th, uh, uh, is, is, is a former president and 60th Republican president of this country. And they were, but I mean, of course, they wanted to understand what the former president's act in Zambia, whether it does relate to the former president. Now, you, as as as, as from the senior member of, of the Zambian government, what are you saying? What do you recognize? Do you recognize President Lungu's uh, letter of resignation in the year 2021, just after the elections, or the comments and statements coming in from the Patriotic Front? What does it's, government it's, recognize? It's the, the conduct of the former head of state. Mm -hmm. His conduct is um, really against the spirit of the communication, the official communication that he made to government that he's retired from active politics. Mm -hmm. But his conduct says otherwise. What, what conduct? I mean, uh, we haven't no, seen the, co the president, of, we haven't seen uh, president, former President Lungu in public and, and campaigns and making statements, apart from few uh, appearances he's made, especially at church. Yeah, you and, would, and so you what, would, you what would, conduct? I mean, what conduct are you talking it, it, about? No, no, look, mm. even when you appear at church, the kind of message that you preach when you appear at church is that of love, of unity, of uniting the country. You don't go to church and start saying, look, we, we will continue this, we continue that, you go to the hospital, there are hospitals out there, you, you don't do that, you you preach unity. You are supposed to be the one to spearhead uh, the unity in the country, you are supposed to be the statesman, you are supposed to be, uh, President Lungu for me as far as I'm concerned is missing an opportunity yet again, he has been seriously misled. Mm -hmm. by the people around him. What he needed to do by now is to avail himself to the state, avail himself to his younger brother, who is the current president now, and say, my brother, I am done with active politics. Any assignment you want me to do, I'm here to help you. For example, like I was saying the other day, we have the flood situation in the country and so on. One would have expected that President Lungu would have actually been the one going around the country checking on the flood situation 
Ukraine and go to report back to his president now and say, Mr. President, this is what I found on the ground. This is what we need to do for, for our people and so on. He's supposed to be the fountain that we all run to as the elder statesman of the country, being non-partisan. That's what is very crucial, being non-partisan. Meaning that, for example, even if UPND is having internal quarrels within themselves as a political party, they should feel free to go to a former president and say, how did you used to do these things when you were in active politics? And he's able to provide counsel. He's able to provide counsel to various political parties. He's able to provide counsel to government. He's able to provide counsel to uh, uh, CSOs. Okay? But right now, can President Lungu do that? No. Because he's sectarian. He is leader of the Patriotic Front. He's only available to the Patriotic Front. If this government was cruel, really, by now, we would have withdrawn that pension, that, that pension from you. So, so what you're saying right. is that, yes, because that, that's what I wanted to ask. Uh, how is government treating that, it now? That pension kicks in with a condition. Mm. The condition is that you must uh, do away with active politics, mm. and the pension kicks in. Remember where it came from. Uh, when Dr. Kaunda left office, he started being active in politics. Uh, I don't know if you would recall or not, but I, I, I'm a scholar of history. Mm. Uh, at one point, uh, Dr. the late Dr. Mainza Chona and uh, the current Zambia's High Commissioner to Malawi, Sapanji Kaunda, I had to sit down with the old man and agree with him and negotiate and allow him to get out of politics. It was out of that that the law was coined that you have access to your pension provided you are out of active politics. But if you decide to go back into active politics, your pension falls off because then you are a leader of a competition. You are a leader of a competitive political party. Right now, the Patriotic Front is on record by its own chief executive officer, and the records are even filed before the courts of law in Zambia that this man is still our president, and there is no record of him, as far as the party is concerned, that he has resigned. So, a so, position mm -hmm. that he himself mm -hmm. has not disputed or commented otherwise on. So how is, so that, how, how is, that, how is that, that government? That position, yes, how is government that this position deserves mm -hmm. that position deserves that that uh, the patient uh, that uh, the, the former president is enjoying ought actually to be uh, withdrawn mm -hmm. but because this is not a cruel administration i could only imagine if the tables were turned mm -hmm. and and president uh Akainde was the former president and president Lung was in office by now mm -hmm. would have finished him already but you see we we are giving him the benefit of doubt and at the same time hoping that he comes to a realization that what he is going through or what he is uh, being used for by his own people is that they are risking his, uh, his pension benefits mm -hmm. because those kick in when you are non-partisan. Right now he is partisan and he does not uh, deserve to be on that pension but this government has continued to provide that pension because you see, so what one, by now we have even withdrawn the state security around the man. He would have been guarded by his own PF uh, cadres or security. The next thing they even steal his boats and uh, you know leave the fridge or something. But this government is saying he is our former president. Let us give him the respect he deserves. We are still respecting him. His pension continues despite all these things that are actually on record mm -hmm. and being proclaimed that he is not a former president of PF. He is the current president of the Patriot. Different. All right. So what you're saying is that uh, government will continue uh, providing what an ex-president or former president deserves. What I'm saying is that government has continued at the moment to provide. So they, I cannot guarantee mm. if government will continue going forward if the status quo does not change around him. That I can't guarantee. So okay, because what, what are you expecting? What are you expecting from from the former president? To be to be non-partisan. I mean, I'm, I'm to just be saying to, 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 to be to be sure. available mm -hmm. to the states, to be available to Zambians. Mm -hmm. He just ought to be a parent. 
a former president. And he, for you, he, he has hasn't, he, he hasn't come out. He hasn't you come. Deserve it. I, I believe he hasn't come out to decide where he is now, or maybe to answer uh, what uh, his party, the PF, former party PF. Uh, I don't know which title to uh, put. But <laughs> there's a reason why you. Let me finish. 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 Let me
Any reasons that were advanced by uh, the former president not to attend the Democratic Summit? No, none. When you snap, you don't even give a reason. I use the word snap. He snapped it. Every function, national function that takes place in this country, I can come here with copies of invitation for every national event that takes place in this country. President Lungu is invited. He snaps. Let's try to... He even snapped the commemoration of the first memorial for President Rupia Banda. So, what, what, what? What does he want? Are there any efforts being made uh, on the part of government to bring some form of unity from the past regime and the current what, regime? What would you call an extension of invitation mm -hmm. after invitation, if not a recognition? What would you call that? All those are attempts to show that this is where you belong now. Your status is that of the former head of state. And that is why there is, at every function, there is a seat reserved for you. There is a special invitation for you. That question would have arisen if this government does not invite him. Then even he can stand and say, where do you want me to go? Can I force myself on people who don't invite me? They don't want me. But he can't say that. Because at every function, he's invited. Every national event, he's invited. He snubs. You're watching this week's edition of Oxygen of Democracy, and my guest is uh, Director and Spokesperson for the Ministry of uh, Information and Media, and discussing quite a number of issues. And uh, uh, Mr. Kaona being my guest, uh, of course, in a few minutes' time, will allow uh, some of the callers to come through and, and seek your clarification on some of the points that you're raising. Uh, let's try to talk about other issues. I, I, I cannot let you go without uh, seeking answers from you. The situation of uh, the cost of living uh, continues coming up every time there's someone from government and uh, we there's an upward experience of cost of living at the moment and uh, it's the opposite of the campaign promises that we made. We described the cost of living uh, under the Patriotic Front administration as high, and the premise or the campaign promises that were made uh, by the current administrator, the administrators of that of the government, they were saying we'll bring something low, and it's the opposite of what was promised. What is happening now, and what are some of, 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 the, of the solutions that we we're going to experience from the one, part of government? One of the things that is exacerbating the mm -hmm. cost of living is the pressure that the Zambian culture is under. Sure. Remember, we are an import-oriented country, mm -hmm. and the the culture right now is um, under a lot of stress and pressure, which is being exerted um, and exacerbated by the prolonged um, negotiations around debt restructuring. Um, we had envisioned that by the end of this quarter, those talks would have finished. But I think you heard um, Finance Minister uh, Stumbe Komsokotwani even today buttress the point that the kind of proposals that we are making to the people we owe money to, mm -hmm. they feel that uh, we are asking for too much. Everything else that they had asked us to do prior to these talks taking uh, place, we have done. All the boxes have been ticked. It is now the boys in their hands. But now they feel that what we are asking for, the kind of uh, haircuts, the kind of uh, uh, debt reliefs that we are asking from them are too much. But what we are saying to them as Zambia, uh, together with the IBF, is that yes, they may be too much, but we want to come out with a win-win situation here. Let's agree so that when we sign today, what we have agreed, we are able to fulfill. So that we pay something. We are not able to pay you now uh, the kind of money that we owe you. But uh, if we agree on this and that, then we are able to pay. So give us an opportunity to put us in a position where 
where we are able to service this facility. As it is now, uh, we are unable. So even if you remain adamant on the other side and say, no, this must be done, uh, yes, we may sign, but we are back to square one. We we'll still fail to service the facility as it were. But if we agree on what we are proposing, uh, then we will be able to service. We come out with a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. We are able to service and survive, and you are also able to come up with something than totally nothing. Mm -hmm. Because if you keep us in this position, we will be unable to give you anything at all. Again, it takes us back to the patriotic front. And this is what you know most Zambians are saying, no, 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 don't refer to the patriotic front. It's you there now. But we cannot not refer to the patriotic front because they are the ones that we are over borrowing. They are the ones that when we were in opposition, we were saying to them, you are over borrowing. You will not be able to pay back this money. And what were their answers? Their answers were that we are still within the threshold of the GDP we can borrow up to 30% of our GDP. Therefore, we are still within the 30% who will be able to manage to pay. And when the time came for them to pay out the first coupon, they defaulted. They couldn't pay. And the Zambian people says, move out. Uh, new donor administration come in. And now we have to come in and we have to sort out this mess. They are not the ones uh, uh, negotiating for the restructuring. We are doing that. They are the ones that got that money. And where is that money? People must ask themselves questions. Where is that money? For example, you got the euro bond, and you said to the Zambian people, this money, it, hundreds and millions, we are pumping it into Zambia railways. We are buying new coaches. We are going to rehabilitate the rail line from uh, Mulovezi mm -hmm. up to Chirilabombe, so that there's a new rail line, and uh, these issues of trains derailing becomes a thing of the past. We'll buy new coaches and the train will now move quicker. It will be at 80 kilometers per hour. All that money is nowhere to be seen. Sure. The Zambia Railways has not gotten any new coaches. Mm -hmm. The rail line remains the same. The railing remains the same. Where is that money? All that money is gone. What was with the majority? Right. So they cannot uh, be the ones who start telling us that no, you you are you are raising the cost of living and so on. Uh, we are cleaning up the mess that they created. And I'm sorry, we cannot not refer to them. We have to continue. Even when you go to church, Alex, in church it is envisioned that your congregation there is of the converted. You are born again or you are converted Christians but still we have to talk about the devil. Why do we have to talk about the devil? So that we do not allow you to backslide mm -hmm. and end up uh, going back to the devil. We have to talk about the PF. We are where we are today because of what they did. So we still have to tell you that yes, we we are fixing it, which is what we are doing. But it was created by these people. This is what they did. Right. Why? So that the country should never again find itself in the hands of such people. So that they should not have a situation again where we have good people that will go and borrow on behalf of the nation. And the nation has to pay back. But the things you claimed you borrowed for, we can't see them. The money is nowhere. Mr. I, I, I'm, I'm glad you've talked about the issue of uh, debt restructuring and, and why it's connected to the current uh, cost of living, the situation rather, of the cost of living in this country. Uh, in the news item, we, we, we had uh, an economist uh, talking about uh, the debt restructuring uh, process that we have in this country. He has predicted that Zambia's debt restructuring, that's uh, Dr. Lovinda Abazoka, former EAZ uh, uh, president, has predicted that Zambia's debt restructuring will be very difficult because of conflicting interest from the West and the East. Uh, Dr. Abazoka says the role of China in debt restructuring is very important but was not handled very well initially despite China being ready to come
um, on the table. These are some of the comments, and I believe uh, the CSOs last week had uh, a detailed discussion on Zambia's debt restructuring process. So, here's a reason being given that uh, it's, it's, a flawed, we, it's a flawed reason. We, 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 it we, is we a seem flawed, to choose who to talk it to. It is a flawed mm. reason based on misinformation and being told by a prophet of doom. Habazoka, mm. not too long ago in the regime of the PF, is one of those parents the ones that now want to start championing that you know this that so they want that kind of we don't do that we, we don't do that All right we are civilized people let's get to our phone lines now zero seven seven six four zero nine eight four zero is the number that you are calling we're discussing zambia's development status and my guest is uh mr tabo kawana uh, from the ministry of information and media helping us uh, discuss quite a number of issues what are your questions what are your comments you're calling zero seven seven six four zero nine eight four Four zero uh, uh, to be part of this uh, evening's edition of Oxygen of Democracy. We are discussing Zambia's development status. Zero seven seven six four zero nine eight four zero is the number that you're calling, and the phone lines are now open. Uh, Mr. Kawana, before we allow some few calls to come through, you keep referring to the past administration as. Uh, we've called them Masholi, we've called them Amambala, and before you uh, you answer this question, let's get to our phone lines. Do you get through to the program? Good evening. Yes. Yes, you're through to the program. Your name and where you're calling us from? This oxygen, yes, please. Your name and where you're calling us from? Yeah, this is Mukonda. This is coming from Kikwe. Yes, Mr. Mukonda, please give us your comment this evening. Yes, uh, my 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 conviction is uh, if you are in the government position, you know. Hello? Yes, yes, please, please go ahead. If we end up on a position for the sun, three minutes for the day, one way and thank you for the chat. Now, my concern of the citizens is that we have a little bit of a sun because now my next photo is in the number. What I'm saying, I'm not sure that you're not paying to very pay a channel when they export to Africa out of the country. And again, no more than that because they know that I want to show you funny things, but despite all these things, uh, the criminal is such a good idea. We're going to go to the table and we're going to go to the table and we're going to go to the table and we're going to go to the table. Now, Mona, if it tries to reach you for again, I'll pass you up with a shoe for another one to show the moon, which I'll just am there, but it's quite too early to search for. Please, please, you never have to go back and take a team. What to wear and time she. What to add here, and I want to show you a quarter of a commander. But that you want, I want to show you a way to again about paying in a shoe for which you want to have a version of the country. It's a shoe. So, please, please, you never want to bomb to the world to offer a sign of an over the needs of the country, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. To appreciate Mr. Mkonda for that. Mr. Mkonda for that call. You're calling 0776-409840 is the number that you are using to be part of this evening's, this week's edition of Oxygen of Democracy. And we're discussing Zambia's development status. My guest is uh, Mr. Tabo Kawana, uh, Director and Spokesperson under the Ministry of Information and Media. We have another caller. Good evening. So to Oxygen of Democracy, good evening. Hello. Yes, your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Kabamba, Kabamba Kailatini. Yes, please, Mr. Kabanga, give us your comment. Kabamba Kabamba Kailatini. Please go ahead and give us your comment this evening. Yes, ma, I wanted to know, uh, Mr. Kawana was saying, uh, uh, Edi Galungu is, is not regarded as a former president because of his status being a PA president. Supposing, I'm not wishing anybody death, but supposing if he dies today, in what regard are we going to bury him? What's your, what's your question again? 
I, I want to find out it. Supposing, I'm not wishing anybody death, but supposing Ed Balloon died today, in what regard are we going to bury him? We are going to bury him as PF president or former president. Right. Thank you so much. Do appreciate for that. Yes, you thank you so much. Question? Yes, yes, we've okay, got fine, your question. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. We do appreciate it. 0776409840 is a number that we are using for this uh, evening's edition of Box Screen of Democracy. Uh, before, okay, let me get my last caller for, for, for this time. Now. Please, your name and where are you calling us from? Hello? Yes, your name and where are you calling us from? I'm Plonga, uh, Brand, Okay, please go ahead. Yes, give us your comment this evening. Yes, I uh, would like to appreciate what uh, Mr. Kawana is uh, saying, uh, but uh, my main issue is on um, uh, the president, the former president. I think he shouldn't be given anything. He should everything should be drawn from him because he's using taxpayers' money, and us as taxpayers, we, we, we wouldn't want somebody who is. Uh, is still in active politics to be using our money. So let them not be lenient on him because uh, he's not using the party, UPND party money, or oh, what, but he's using our money. So let them just uh, put him where he's supposed to be. Let them not think that they are fixing him or what. Let them just take him as he is uh, in active politics because uh, the money that he's using is ours. Yeah, that's my question. Thank you. Do appreciate for that. Let, let me allow Mr. Kawana now to, to handle some of those comments that have come through. Yes, uh, from the first caller, uh, I just want to assure him and uh, through him the nation mm -hmm. that the country is food secure. They shouldn't worry. Uh, FRA has not exported any maize. Um, private individuals have been exporting maize and they've been given permits and uh, those that have tried to do so illegally have had their contraband um, confiscated including the transport vessels uh, confiscated uh, because uh, this government has said and we maintain so that we will not close the borders but we want people to do orderly things mm -hmm. uh, if they want to sell their maize outside the country and earn some profit and bring in some forex and so on we will allow them to do so but they should follow the procedure but and as far as uh, food is concerned uh, the nation should rest assured that we are food secure even if in this season we come out with nothing we are still food secure to take us to the next season so FRA has enough uh, stock and uh, actually I want to re-emphasize that FRA has not and has never under this administration exported any maize. FRA has however intervened uh, 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 through government directive by uh, selling maize directly to millers to mitigate the milling mill situation that had arisen um, um, earlier on. But there has been no export of maize by FRA. However, there's export of maize by private players that seek um, um, payment. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.